Hello everybody and welcome to my 64th VBA 2010 tutorial and this tutorial is going to show you how to use send keys to control other applications. So it's going to lead on from the last tutorial where we were running other applications using the shell command. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to open up the calculator with the shell command. So cool shell and then um, this time instead of passing it a batch file I'm passing it a .exe file which opens up the Windows calculator so let's copy the file path and then let's use normal focus and then when we press play on this it's going to bring up our calculator rather than bringing up a batch file now I want to actually do stuff with this calculator so I'm going to use something called send keys so you just uh, put in cool send keys and then we put in what we want it to type in the keyboard, essentially. Uh, and then we're going to put a comma true. And the true just means that it's going to wait to input this before moving on to the next command. So let's press play. Notice how it's actually typed 64 in my editor rather than my calculator. And that's just because it moves on to this one before it's finished doing the shell command. So we need to just put a little bit of wait time in so that it doesn't move on too quickly. So let's put wait time. And then we have this function here called wait time that I'm using. And you put in a number of milliseconds and it just adds them on to the application.wait function uh, and works out how much extra time. So just copy this function uh, exactly. So we're going to put in wait time uh, 2000 uh, and then we want to press play again to test it so it opens it up and then it puts 64 in uh, we're then going to press add so let's put send keys and then add and then true and press play and so it will come through, come through to 64. Notice that it's not pressing add. So the reason for this is because this actually means, uh, I think it means shift. So what we have to do is just put curly braces around it. They kind of act like escape characters. So when we press play, it's going to press 64 and then it's going to press add as well. Uh, we can then move on to our next one, which is send keys. And then let's put 80 born comma true and then press play and it's going to go 64 plus 81 and then finally I want to press enter uh, and you might be thinking well how do I type enter on my keyboard well again we use these curly braces and then we just type enter uh, and there's quite a few different keys uh, that you need to use these curly braces for uh, if you go onto your send keys and press shift f1 then it'll bring up your help document uh, and on here we have a list of all of the different things that you need to use curly braces for uh, and then say so you've got function keys scroll lock pressing right arrow pressing up arrow num lock help home enter end down delete basically everything that is in a, a letter or a number and you've also got the ability at the bottom to use shift and something else. So if you want to press, say, uh, control and S to save a document, you'd use this little up sign and then an S. So uh, we're using the enter. So when we press play, it's going to bring up the calculator and then do the calculation for us. Let's say we want to close it off at the end. We do cool send keys. And then we want to use our, we go into our help, we want to use our one for alt and F4. So F4 we see is in curly things. And then the alt we see need to do a percent. So let's go a percent sign and then F4. Come true. And then let's just wait two seconds before doing that because otherwise it's just going to close it straight away. So let's press play and it's going to do our calculation. Two seconds later, it's going to close down the calculator. And that is essentially how you use send keys. Uh, what I want to do next is I actually want to open up two applications. I'm going to switch between the two. 
So I'm not going to close it down. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do a control, which is up button like this, and then C to copy what's in the calculator. I'm then going to uh, use the shell command again, but with this file path two, that's going to open up notepad. So let's do call shell and then file path two comma vb normal focus close bracket uh, and then i'm going to do another wait time of two seconds uh, and then i'm going to call send keys and then this time i want to do control and v to paste come on true uh, and then let's press play on this. So it's going to open up calculator, do the calculation, load up notepad, paste it in, 145. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, and let's not save this. Let's just close these down. So that is how you open up two. What if we then want to switch back into the calculator and do another calculation? We don't want to just open up a new calculation because a uh, calculator because then we'll have loads open. So we want to be able to reference this one back here. So instead of using a call function on our shell command, we're actually going to assign the function to a variable. So I'm going to assign it to calc ID and then equals the shell command. And now what calc ID is going to store is it's going to store kind of the, a reference to this command. So now we've done our pasting in, we can put in some wait time and then get our calc id and go call app activate open bracket pass it as the title parameter the calc id and then let's uh, put weight as false uh, and we put weight as false in this case uh, because it means a slightly different thing and if you put true it's going to wait until you come back into here to start off this bit um, so if you put true it waits until it's back in the editor before it carries on running which we don't want it to do we want it to run straight away so put false uh, we're then going to wait another two seconds uh, I actually think we're going to put one second around this app activate make it go a little bit faster and then we're going to send another calculation similar to this one so control c and paste it down here uh, and so this time let's do uh, 21 plus 45 and that all looks good to me and then similarly to how we got the ID for the calculator I'm going to make a notepad ID and then I'm going to app activate down here and put some wait time in oh, I'm going to go in off the screen and put some more wait time in and then we want to change this to our notepad ID. Uh, and then when we come back into here, we just want to do the control V again. Excellent. So now when we press play, it's going to open up our calculator, do our first sum, 145, paste it into notepad for us, open up our calculator, do another calculation, copy it, go back into Notepad, paste it in for us. Uh, and it's all automated. Uh, what I actually want to do is I'm just going to put another enter in here. So let's copy our enter one and put it in. So it goes on to the next line. So let's just play this again. So it does the calculation, opens up Notepad, paste our calculation in, goes back into Calculator, does another one, goes back into Notepad, press enter and puts the extra calculation in and obviously you can keep going and you can make it run for as long as you want uh, and you can also use if statements loops whatever to draw information out of your spreadsheet put it into various applications uh, and then 
bring it back into your code or put it into other applications. We could do loops, so we could keep going over and over and over again, put loads of stuff into Notepad, things like that. Um, it doesn't have to be Notepad in the calculator, it can be any .exe application. Just remember that you want to be putting true on your send keys, false on your app activate, and then using your wait time in between to make sure an appropriate amount of time is being waited between the individual uh the individual kind of commands because otherwise you'll start writing in places you don't want to write uh, and then you're going to have all kinds of pain so that is going to be it for this tutorial thanks for listening i know it was quite a long one and uh, the next few tutorials i'm going to start showing you how to use objects in vba so this is going to be really powerful uh, and quite complicated so get your thinking hats ready and i hope to catch you in the next tutorial